What's up guys, Shutter Assassin here. Right here in Fishtown Vapes, I'm gonna show you a little bit of something today. So today I'm gonna go ahead and teach you how to do something that everybody wants to know. And that is how to build a RDA. You know, everybody wants to get that nice red glowing coil up in their mod. You know, right here I got the double stack AV stack mod. And yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and teach you guys how to do this and hopefully guys, I can teach you well because I don't want any of y'all blowing up. So let's go ahead and start doing this. Alright, so some quick things you guys are going to need are maybe a couple screwdrivers, some tweezers. Uh, usually I ask people to get some ceramic tweezers, but any tweezers we'll use. Um, we're not really going to need pliers, but we are going to need some snips, some wire, some scissors. And usually you can use just a screwdriver to wrap around, but I will be using my coil master bits here. And then we're going to go ahead and use an ohm reader. This ohm reader, if you have a, reg um, a regulator mod, you won't really need it. But other than, than like regulated mods, if you have a mech, you're going to have to use it so you know exactly what you're popping out, what you're going to be vaping on, what you're going to be blowing up. And let's go ahead. Let's continue with this little video. You know, this is all you need. If you have a vape kit, kudos to you. It's going to be easy for you. Uh, and, of course, we're going to need our mod and some juice. I'm going to be vaping on some Air Factory today, some Blue Raz, best juice in the world. Highly recommend this juice. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and start getting to the vaping in the building. You know, let's do this. Alright, so welcome down to the preview thing. So first of all, let me go ahead and take out my coil and talk to you guys a little bit. Alright, so RDAs, mechanical mods, they are maybe some of the most fidgety mods ever. If you don't know what you're doing, I fear for your life, I fear for your health, I fear for your safety, alright? Because these guys are the ones that blow up on people. I know you guys probably hear the mods that, you know, explode, the little vapes that explode. That's these tube mods. Tube mods, box mods that are unregulated, meaning that you have no chips, no wires, no safety harnessed to keep you safe while you're vaping, you know? So if you want to be safe, you have to make sure you know your Ohm's Law, you know what you're doing, you know what you're vaping on. If you don't know anything of this, I'm going to try to teach you my best, but you're going to have to like study your Ohm's Law on your own, just know what you're doing, all right? So with that said, let's go ahead and start building. So first thing, of course, you're going to need is your wire. Right here I have some um, some A1 Alien, it's Kenthaw, it's 32 gauge, 0 0.3 by 8.5 flat. It's a nice little wire, let me see if I can get it to focus right there. I doubt it, but it's, it's a nice little wire. It's already a pre-built Alien, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get my wrapping tools. Sorry if you guys can't see my face, you know, I don't want you guys to see the ugly face, I want you guys to see the cute, you know, the beautiful little coils we have here. I'm going to, so I'm going to be using the <clears throat> three millimeter bit. Nice sort of like medium size. It's not too big. It's not too small. And I believe I'm going to be doing an eight wrap. So all this means, right? Three and a half at 3.0, 3.0 millimeters, three millimeters, whatever you want to call it. So that thing just pops on like that. You just screw this right on. I'm not going to teach how to use the tools. I'm assuming you guys know how to use tools. Alright, so, and I need my wire cutters. I'm going to go ahead and cut a second. Hopefully my camera don't fall. I don't have a tripod or anything right now. I'm just using like this little box I found. So I'm going to cut off approximately like maybe a foot and a half of this wire. I probably won't even use it all, so I'll just leave it for Hunter later. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and snip it. Oh, the wire fell. There you go. Here's my wire. Put that aside. So yeah, the way this works, I can't stick the end of these. Usually when you use these tools, there's holes on the end where you just stick them in and it'll come out the other side so you can pinch with your thumb. I kind of have to use this little flat groove that's there. So I just stick a good portion of the wire through. I may make a 9 wrap today or a 10 wrap. I'm not sure yet. I'll do a 7 just to be safe. So I sort of stick it in there and let it hang out the corner. And then I just start, start off the little first wrap just by bending it down. And that's when I throw on, throw on my little wrapper thing on, on the end of this wire. I mean, on the end of the tool. And I just start wrapping it slowly. Because this wire does not like wrapping, right? So that's two wraps. That's three wraps. Four wraps. Five wraps. Six. Let me squeeze that to get it. It looks not neat. Yep, so... That's what I'm talking about. This wire is really finicky. I completely just messed up. That's why I cut extra wire. Whoop whoop. 
right, let's give this another shot. I should be straightening this out just to make it a little bit easier on myself, but you know, whatever. Stick a good portion through, have it hanging off the corner, bend this down. Let's just try to get these wraps started off. That's two. That's going to be three if this will stop being so weird. That's three. That is four. I'm just going to do it with my hands. It's a little bit easier for me. That is five. If you have straight wire, you could just go ahead and do it with the tool. It will be a lot easier. A round wire. That is six, right? And this right here is number siete. Seven, guys. For those of you who don't speak Spanish. Anyways, that's in there. It's nice and wrapped. So you can take a look at that. I'll focus right down the coil. Wish I had a macro lens right now. I can't get it to focus right, but anyway, that's my coil. I'm going to go ahead and tidy this up a little bit by just finishing off that first wrap because it looks nasty. I'm going to go ahead and cut the leaves. Let's cut right there. Alright, so here I have my coil. It looks nice and okay. It's not exactly the prettiest thing ever. Try to focus a little bit more, can I? Throw some manual focus mode, dude. Should be a little easier. No bueno, no bueno at all. Anyways, that's the coil. So let's go ahead and get our mod and start trying to throw this thing in there. Let's go. Okay, so dealing with the build deck itself is kind of you know it's kind of finicky by itself. So on this build deck, this is the drop dead, I believe. Yeah, the drop dead RDA. It's a really good RDA. It has a nice well. The drop dead is a combination between the drop RDA and the dead rabbit RDA which are two great amazing RDAs they're pretty much like you know those RDAs that you find that you love and when they combine them they become the perfect RDA that's what this thing is right it's a little finicky to build on but I love this thing so I don't know if you can see in there the dropouts you could like just shove your little cutters through there cut the wires under there it's really fun um but anyways so up here we have two posts. You have your silver and your gold. The silver is negative post that's grounded straight to the actual build deck. Then the gold goes straight down to your gold plated 510, which is on the bottom of your RDA. So that gold plate takes the positive charge. The silver sort of takes the negative. I'm literally dropping everything in this video. So gold takes the positive. The, gold, the silver takes the actual negative charge. And that's what closes the circuit to actually give you that nice, you know, plume of smoke to start vaping on. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this quick. Uh, with this specific RDA, I'm just going to be using a flathead. A lot of RDAs use hex screws, use Phillips, use some weird type of screw. Sometimes you can just tighten up with your fingers, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and start using this. Um, where'd my coil go? How the heck did I just lose my coil? <laughs> oh... I'm a mess today. There it is, it's right in front of my face. There's the coil. Get this to focus. Sorry about the focusing sound, by the way. It's just. There you go. There's the coil. You guys can see that. Yeah, anyways, sorry about the focusing sound. My lens is really loud. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pre cut this. Just probably going to use about half of this right here. And I'm going to use the same thing to measure the other one right around maybe here and then see a good thing about this wire is I've, I've used wire before that when you cut it it just goes flying everywhere and sometimes you're finding in your room you're walking around and boop stuck in your foot and then you have the worst pain ever you feel me so yeah that's something I'm gonna avoid with this RDA with this wire because it's a lot easier to cut so yeah what I'm just doing is I'm just dropping this coil one lead in the negative one lead in the positive I'm gonna go ahead and cross them over like that make it sort of horizontal you guys can see that so yeah next step is basically just gonna go ahead and lift these up so it's not exactly touching the deck I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening the wire to the positive make sure it's a good length make sure I like it so this should be a really good little build here tighten that down and I'm remember that this coil doesn't have to be exactly neat you just gotta have it in there right you do all the tightening up later so those two posts are tightened. I go ahead and straighten this out. So this is what I'm talking about doing it later. It's in there. Now go ahead and start making it pretty. So I'm just going to go ahead and straighten this out with the middle. 
make sure that my wires are you know not crossing over each other it's better to do all this while it's still cold because once you heat it up you gotta it's gonna take a little bit longer you know you gotta wait for it to cool down you gotta wait for it to like harden again because once metal gets hot it loosens itself up so that's pretty much in there and now I had a question about you know how to do certain steps with this once you actually have the coil in you want to make sure that you don't just throw cotton and vape it you want to go ahead and start you know tweaking it you want to prime that thing before right so this step is really easy you just heat it up now I don't know if you can see that I have two heat spots right there that's well more like three but you see how it's not glowing evenly to fix that problem all you have to do is do a technique called strumming where it's just scrape against the coil like this with tweezers if you have ceramic tweezers you could fire it and do it while you have it right I'm just scraping across taking out some of those heat spots starting to glow a little bit more prettier more evenly and yeah this is a single coil build but same thing applies to a dual coil you just pop them in there and make sure that you have everything nice and fixed up you want to tweak these coils to the point where they're glowing evenly nicely if you have two coils in there make sure they're both, both glowing from the middle out and both at the same time at the same you know rate because if not you have one coil taking more energy than the other one and yeah it's not going to be really pleasant because then you're going to be having only one coil vape while the other one's just heating up halfway it's not really exactly the most pleasant thing ever so that now is heating up nice it's glowing from the middle out. Let's cool that down quick. Alright, so check that out. Let me go ahead and focus on this, make sure it's in focus. Check that out. From the middle out, it's nice and orange, it's glowing nice and bright. So now I'm going to go ahead and cool that down, let that, you know, actually be able to be touchable, because if not, I might burn myself. Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to the face shot. Anyways, so while that's cooling down, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about Air Factory Blue Raz. This might be one of the first juices I vaped with Hunter. And by far, it has been my favorite juice ever. It is just a... It's just really good, you know. If you guys like Airheads, taste just like the Blue Airhead. Um, it's a pleasant vape. It's nice and... You no, know, it's really... I don't know how to describe, describe it, it's like, it's sort of just a, you know, clean vape, you know, the juice isn't, you know, one of those brown juices, it's just, you vape it, it's sweet, it's clean, you don't taste anything else but the juice, I know some juices you get them and they taste just like pure nicotine or something, um, yeah, but this juice, it's amazing, you know, it smells just like blue ras. it's a really good juice. Um, but anyway, that should be cooled down. Let's go ahead and go down to the, you know, just section shot. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. Alright guys, welcome back to the body shot. Alright, let's go ahead and try to do this, the body shot. What the heck, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Alright, so, at 3.0, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm really good with cutting cotton, so I don't really need to measure it, but if you guys need to, you know, figure out how much cotton you need, I usually just recommend looking at the cotton, looking at the coil at this from this little perspective over here and just like you know you don't want too much cotton you don't want too little cotton you want the right amount of cotton to fill it up and go all the way through it that way you know you don't get any dry hits or any burnt tastes because it's not really pleasant when you're vaping it's not exactly the best thing you want to do so a lot of people like twisting both ends of the cotton when they have like a uh, dual build what I just do is like thin it out I make sure there's no clumps in there Pull out any extra cotton that's in there and then I just grab it with one hand and I just roll it just like that in between my finger and my thumb. Let me focus up quick. Yeah, I just roll it between my finger and my thumb and get this nice little tail on it. That part goes inside the cotton, I mean inside the coil, just like this. If I could do it like this off on the camera. Yep, just like that. I'm using my legs to hold the mod. <laughs> Alright. So now that the cotton's in there, you have to cut it. So let me grab my scissors. Should put this build kit somewhere more convenient, right? My little scissors. And usually I'll just bend this down to get a guess of where I want it to be. I want sort of an arc in it, so I'll pop that up. And I want to make sure that this cotton touches the bottom of the build deck, so I go ahead and cut it where I measured. Remember, measure twice, cut once. I want to snip this here. 
the scissors are acting up like always. Got a good cut though. I'll pick it up later. And you could take your tweezers or a screwdriver and just tuck that in. But usually what I tell people to do is try to turn it upside down and pop it in. After you have it inside of there, you should be all good to go. You should be able to wick it. So do that to both sides of the cotton. If you have a uh, dual build in there, you have to do it to all four sides. But since I'm running two batteries in this mod, I want to keep it, you know, high ohms around 72. So I know for a fact that this is around 40, a point forty two build in there. It's a really high resistance because I have two batteries. I have double the voltage, double the wattage, double everything in here. So I run one coil in there. Gives me better battery life and a better vape. It gives you sort of a, a thin plume of smoke but still enough to trick on it and I really enjoy the way it feels so we're gonna go ahead and juice it there's no rules to this really just make sure it's saturated and you don't get none on your mod it's really simple so you want to put some on the coil the cotton and make sure everything's saturated don't be afraid to get juice all over your RDA because RDAs are meant to be juicy all of the cotton coil everything so when you have a brand new build in here like I just put one in you want to make sure that you know your ohms. So I'm guessing around 0 0.42, 0 0.30. I could be wrong. I haven't made this build ever, so last one I had was like a 0 0.10. So I'm guessing it's around 0.40, give or take, right? So we're gonna go ahead and take my RDA off. I should have done this earlier, but you know, got caught up in the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it onto here. Right onto this guy right here. And we're just going to go ahead and measure the ohms on this, right? So, to 0 0.62. 0 0.62, that's way off, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and fire that a little bit. See how the actual vapor produces. You can barely see it starting. Very slow ramp up time. Doesn't look promising. Yeah, whatever. 0 0.62, perfectly safe on the series mod. We're going to go ahead and throw this into my RDA. I mean, into my mech mod, onto my mech mod. Right? Screw this on. So, again, this isn't like a review or anything. This is like an informational video. Just give you a couple of the tips you need to actually build this. I'm not going to go super in depth because there's plenty of YouTube videos out there. So, let's go ahead and juice this up. Let's pre fire and then let's throw our RDA cap on and have a vape, won't we? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take this up to the face shot so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. All right, let's go. Woo! <laughs> All right, so I have it juiced up and everything. Let's go ahead and do a pre-fire. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice cloud production, isn't it? Let's juice it up a little bit more. And throw an RDA cap on it. So, just like that, I have a build in this. It's ready to vape. And let's go ahead and have a vape. Great flavor, man. Yeah, it's... This is a great juice overall, man. Great juice, great build. Alright, so if you guys are just learning how to do this stuff, like I said, make sure you know your Ohm's Law. I can't really teach you because I don't even know it that much. I just know... When you have a battery and it's discharging into, let's say, an atomizer like this, right? You're draining that battery at a certain rate. If you under drain that battery, you're going to be safe. If you over drain that battery, you're going to heat that battery up to a point where what's going to want to happen? When there's heat inside of a pressurized low metal tube, what's going to happen? Of course, kaboom, combustion, explosion, right? Then you get your artery straight into your face, your teeth are broken, your face is burnt. Not, not, not what you want. Not, 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 what the hell was that? Anyways, you do not want that. <clears throat> so, safe range for a single stack mod. I'd say stay from 0.15 all the way up to like 1 ohm. I know the ramp up time is going to be like 38 minutes or something, but still. From 0.15, you get a nice ramp up time, a nice heat, a nice production of vapor. For a double stack, and I'm talking about 1860s, 3.7 volts, right? For a double stack... I say 0.42 and up is probably where you want to go, right? So if you're like at 1.76 ohms, you're perfectly safe. But if you're down at a 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42, 0.42,
your ohms, your resistance is a lower number, meaning it's going to heat up a lot faster. And that means you're taking more, you know, more power and you're draining that battery way too fast. Up here towards one point something, you're barely even draining that battery at all. And you're going to be safe either way. So 0.42 and up, safe for a double stack. For a single stack, you want to stay around 0 0.15, 0 0.10, all the way up. All right, got it? So make sure that you don't go any lower. You know, it's not really not safe. Um, another thing is your battery safety. When you have batteries, I have examples of bad batteries here. Your batteries do not want to look like this, like they have no wraps on them. Your batteries don't want to look like this. Well, kind of do want to look like this. They have wraps on them. There's no cuts on the wraps, you know. And uh, another thing, you want to make sure you check your con connections. Make sure there's no dents on them, no dents back here. Uh, oh, final cut. That's not safe. Oh, you can't even see it. You can't see it. Anyway, there's a little cut right there in the wrap. Meaning if I put this inside my mod and I try to fire it, positive, negative touch, short circuit, kaboom. Another thing. Um, so yeah, just make sure your batteries are safe. I have a bunch of batteries here that I need to rewrap soon. And like I said, <clears throat> be safe vaping. Don't make any dumb mistakes that, you know, these people have made in the past. We want to keep the vape community the actual thing in the future. We don't want people to be looking at it like, oh no, it's dangerous. It's going to kill you, right? So just try to vape safe. Make sure you know what you're doing, especially when you're using make mods and RDAs. If you have a regulated mod and you can throw anything you want up there, don't even take this video into regard. Like, if you're using a box mod with a gene chip or something, a DNA chip, perfectly safe, alright? Just make sure your batteries are safe. Another thing, uh, yeah, if you guys ever need some help, come down to Fishtown Vapes, 2040 Frank Fred, I Philadelphia, PA, 19120. Um, just come down straight over here, hang out with us, we're definitely down to hang out with anyone who comes through. Uh, if you need to learn any of this stuff, go ahead. If you need to buy a mod, we're not going to lie to you. I tell people we have crappy mods all the time. I tell them, yeah, don't buy that. It's crap. Right? I tell people all the time. I'm not going to try to like, oversell you something that's trash. Um, you need juice. We have some excellent flavors we make here. And also, we have a whole rack of premium lines you can go and try, just like Air Factory Blue Raz. And guys, remember, stay humble. Vape safe. Try to vape safe. Because I know I made a couple of dumb mistakes. I threw a .15 on a double stack. And whew. anyways. So yeah, guys. Be safe. Stay humble. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for tuning into my channel. And I'll see you next time. What am I doing with my life?